When you become sick or injured, you will often discover just how little a covert narcissist cares about you, especially if you need to rely on them or your situation inconveniences them in any way. In this video, we look at 8 ways a covert narcissist may act when you are sick or injured. Use your illness to get attention. A covert narcissist may use your illness or injury to gain attention and sympathy for themselves by telling everyone they meet or posting on social media about how hard it is for them to see you suffering. If they help you out, even to a minor extent, they will often make a big show of taking care of you. The focus will be on how your situation affects them rather than the pain or discomfort you are in. They often exaggerate your symptoms, injuries or your need for help so that people will think the narcissist is more affected by your situation or doing more for you than is true. They may also take on tasks that are unnecessary or that you can easily handle yourself in order to be seen as the one doing all the work. They may even make up stories of how difficult a person you are to deal with and help or how abusive you are when all they want to do is help you to further enhance their image of a devoted partner, parent or friend who will even suffer to help out an ungrateful person. This may cause people to have sympathy for the narcissist instead of you, the person in need, and may even cause people to not want to help you and even cause them to start to believe you deserve your illness or injury because you are such a bad person. Invalidate or downplay your illness or injuries. Playing the victim to get attention and resources is one of a covert narcissist's main strategies. Thus, they often cannot take it when someone else is sick or injured as it takes away attention from them. They often believe and act as if they have suffered the most in the world and that no one can understand them. If your suffering is greater than theirs, it threatens their image and manipulation tactics, for in the future, when they make a big deal about having a bad hair day or getting cold food, you may remind them of how trivial that is against how you have suffered and tell them to suck it up, which is the tactic they use against you. Thus, they may see your injury or illness as a threat to their control, image and the attention they get. To eliminate this problem, they often downplay the severity of your illness or injury, invalidate them or ignore your illness and injury altogether by even claiming you are faking your illness or the pain you have. They may say things like, stop acting, it is not that bad or it is all in your head or stop complaining and just take your pills and you'll be fine. Or, I've had to deal with worse things than this. You need to toughen up. They may also use statistics or time to invalidate your complaints. Such as, you have a fractured leg and they say, what are you complaining about? It will heal in a few months. This can cause you to doubt your own experiences and make you wonder if you are really sick or if you are overreacting to your injuries. As well as make you feel unsupported in your time of need. Punish you for inconveniencing them. Narcissists often have an exaggerated sense of entitlement and may view any inconvenience or challenge to their own desires as a personal attack. They may feel that you being sick or injured causes you to not live up to their expectations or you not fulfilling your duties that they expect of you and may even start to believe that you being sick or injured is your way of trying to avoid your duties. Thus, the narcissist may lash out with anger, criticism or other forms of punishment. Covert narcissists often express their anger or disappointment in subtle or passive-aggressive ways, such as giving you the silent treatment, withholding affection or support, ignoring your calls for help and claiming they did not hear you, or making snide comments. They may force you to stay in bed, but then only bring you breakfast at noon or refuse that you eat in bed forcing you to get up no matter how sick you are. They may refuse to help you dress or move, making things harder for you. They may delay getting your medication or giving it to you, especially if it is pain medication. If not living with you, they may make you wait for help, such as only coming hours, days or weeks after they promised that they would come. In severe cases, they may even physically attack you for being sick or injured because their life has now changed or you get too much attention. They cannot conceptualize your illness or injury and how it affects you, 
All we think about is how they are affected. Thus, often act like a four-year-old in an adult body who throws a tantrum because their needs aren't met without even thinking about or trying to understand your situation. Only show support when it benefits them. Covert narcissists may withhold support or care unless it benefits them in some way. For example, they may only show concern for you when others are watching. Or they may offer help but make it clear that they expect something in return. For example, a covert narcissistic partner may claim they will take care of you, but then gets angry, frustrated or distant when you don't constantly praise or thank them for their efforts. Even though they are your romantic partner, they may demand you do other favors from them in return or promise to do things for them in the future before they give you help. They may use checking in on you as an excuse for why they came over and then ask to borrow some items while reminding you that you won't be needing them until you recovered. Some will do a small task for you or bring you something small such as one microwave meal and then expect to use your car or motorcycle while you are sick or injured and then get angry when you say no. Try to gain control over you. Covert narcissists have a deep need to be in control to ease their insecurities. You being sick or injured gives them an opportunity to increase their control over you. This is often done by using guilt tripping and shaming tactics to make you feel like you are a burden to them and that you owe them more than you do. This can allow them to get more out of you than you would normally give or manipulate you into agreeing to things you would not normally have done. If that does not work, they can outright threaten you to not help you unless you comply with their demands. This may even entail trying to change your dress code, eating habits, vocation or religion. They may say things like, If you want my help, you will eat what I cook for you. Or, you will join my faith or else I will not help you. Sometimes they'll do it in small ways to avoid conflict, but still make themselves feel in control of you. Such as, they may not buy you or bring you what you ask of them. You may say ask for orange juice and they bring you apple juice and claim it is better for you. Or you ask for a hamburger and they bring you pizza. In some cases, a covert narcissist may even make threats or ultimatums, such as saying things like, if you don't get better soon, I'm going to leave you. Or, unless you do exactly as I say, I will not help you at all. This can leave you feeling trapped, helpless and taken advantage of, with no choice but to comply with a covert narcissist's demands. They blame you. A covert narcissist may blame you for your illness or injury. For instance, if your eating habits or religion is different than theirs, they may claim that if you ate what they eat or if you followed their religion, you would not have gotten ill or injured. If you partake in an activity they do not approve of, they may say things like, well, this is what you get for riding a motorcycle, or I hope you have learned your lesson and will stop being so childish and careless. They may also claim they tried to warn you and that you ignored them, even if they did not. Such as saying, if only you had listened to me and taken better care of yourself, you wouldn't be in this situation. Or, I always knew that was a dangerous hobby. Now you have to suffer the consequences and it's all your own fault. These statements can damage your self-esteem and self-worth and make you feel like you are somehow responsible for your illness or injury even if it was an accident or someone else's fault. It can make you feel guilty and ashamed rather than feeling supported and cared for. They may also use the situation to project their own fears and anxieties onto you and then blame you for causing them to feel this way. Such as saying things like, I can't handle seeing you like this, you making me stressed out. Or, why do you have to cause me so much pain and stress? Devalue you. You being sick or injured allows a covert narcissist the opportunity to assert their superiority over you. They may make comments about how they would never let something like this happen to them or how they would handle the situation so much better if it were them. They may also use the situation to make you feel inadequate or inferior by emphasizing your flaws or weaknesses instead of providing support and care to you. They may say things like, if your driving was as good as mine, you would have avoided the accident. Or, if you were faster or more coordinated like me, you would have avoided the accident. Or, 
If you were as strong and healthy as me, you wouldn't have gotten sick in the first place. These comments are designed to make you feel that your weaknesses or shortcomings are to blame for your situation and that the narcissist is better than you as they do not have these weaknesses or shortcomings. They may even mock or ridicule you by saying things like, so what silly thing did you do now to get injured? Or, so what little bug can your system not handle this time? This behavior is designed to belittle you and make you feel foolish and incompetent. These statements will erode your sense of self-worth and confidence and can make it harder for you to recover and heal due to you being in a low mood or becoming depressed. Undermine or sabotage you. Covert narcissists hate when others outshine them as it reminds them of their own shortcomings and flaws. You being sick or injured often gives them an opportunity to undermine you or sabotage you. They can hamper your healing by withholding your medicine from you or throwing it away, refusing help so you are forced to do tasks that can hinder your healing or even cause further injuries, such as forcing you to get out of bed just to get food or water, not supporting you fully or pulling back and allowing you to fall, or dropping your fractured leg when helping you and then laughing at you being in pain. They may also refuse to clean the house and thus force you to clean even their mess no matter how ill or injured you are. They can sabotage you financially by lying about paying bills but then taking the money for themselves or paying the bills purposefully late. Lie about posting letters or forms you need posted by a deadline. Lie about renewing vehicle licenses for you and so on which can leave you with a lot of problems to deal with later and even cause you to lose your house, apartment or vehicle due to non-payment or cause you to need to pay large fines. They can refuse to buy the items you ask them but buy expensive alternatives or large quantities. Such as, you ask them to buy cheap food items because you don't have a lot of money and then they intentionally buy the most expensive brands on the shelf or buy say 10 kilograms of potatoes, we ask for 1 kilogram, undermining your financial stability and possibly causing the food to go off before you can eat it all. Or you may want to eat healthier or different foods to speed up your recovery and they refuse to buy the items or cook it for you, thus making it clear that they don't care about your needs or preferences. This can lead to you suffering more stress and anxiety during an already difficult time and possibly delaying your healing, not to mention possibly ruining your lifestyle or life. See the video suggested to you right now to discover why narcissists break your stuff.